uh, good afternoon to you all uh, thank you very much for attending this important webinar uh, this webinar is organized by water forum of Institu institution of engineers sri lanka this afternoon this webinar topic is usage of inland water bodies for recreation recently this topic came into media focus due to a construction project of a walking track in Parakram Samudre Dam in Polonnaruwa. This walking track is to be constructed on upstream side of the dam at top edge of the riprap. In order to understand the different dimension of this topic, let me dig in a little. As you all know, throughout history, human have been using water not only for drinking and irrigation, but also for recreation. The life the hood of our society and the country depends on water, agriculture and power. Therefore, it is very important to protect and sustain the related infrastructure. Some countries protect this strategic infrastructure even with buffer zones. But with our limited land availability, countries like us tries to blend these key functions with other subsidiary functions like beautification, recreation and even sharing for economic benefits. Although the walking track in Candy Lake, around Candy Lake and Burlaskamo Lake were well accepted by the people around them, there were growing concern in the society for the recreational development in our major historic dams and other strategic infrastructure. This is mainly due to their function as the main uh, supply source of water and prestige nature of the structure. There's also concern in the professional community that whether the adequate planning, engineering and investigations and stakeholder consultations was done in order to minimize problems during construction like what we are experiencing now and during construction uh, during maintenance in the future. Being myself an engineer, I can say that structures can be planned, designed and construct safely with proper investigation and selecting suitable material for construction. But the story is not going to end there. We have to think about sustainable environmental protection and maintainability while operation. It is also important to address this topic from the recreational point of view as well. One of our member in the water forum asked me an interesting question. That is whether we can have, we can promote recreational, whether we have to promote recreation in built environment or natural environment. So I, I, I answered him that we do not have many options, but to have our recreation on artificial environment, but thinking them as natural. However, our professional community, we have a habit of thinking wide and recommend, recommending conclusive solution. So to discuss this timely topic, we have invited four panel members, namely engineer Dr. H. Mantri Tilaka, Dr. Nihal Vitarana, engineer D. Abhisri Vardhana, and planner, Mr. H. W. Somarapna. The webinar will be moderated by engineer, Mrs. Badra Kamaladas, engineer, Dr. Misaka. Hetiarachi will wrap up and summarize. Thanking you all. Enjoy the webinar. Over to you, engineer Badra. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Palita. Um, good evening, everyone. I hope many uh, in the audience would remember or have heard about Katrina hurricane disaster happened in USA in 2005 August. As a result of heavy storms uh, of flood um, uh, and uh, floods uh, occurred after that, the flood bands along the bank of Mississippi River breached at 23 locations. 1,300 odd people died during the disaster and made billions of dollars lost to the U.S. economy. 
So no need to emphasize over the social and environmental disruption after such a catastrophe. In 2006, June, I was at a Congress uh, of International Commission of Flood Dams uh, uh, to attend the uh, Congress uh, organized by them uh, once in three years. So it is considered as the largest gathering of dam experts all over the world. One day seminar had been organized to make aware of the global community over, the, over this uh, Katrina flood hazard. So I thought uh, they will discuss the hydrological aspect of the storms, which would have been the obvious reason for the disaster, according to the information I knew. So for, further, I thought some independent experts will come and make the presentation. But to my amazement, the full day session was covered by the Army Corps of Engineers who did the design and construction of flood bands. Uh, and the engineers of the local authority responsible for maintenance of these structure also were there uh, delivering their, uh, showing their observations. For me, this is a bit of a surprise. As Sri Lankan, we normally, we, we do not uh, do such uh, evaluations in a open uh, forum and we do it in a closed room. So by the time uh, of the seminar, the team had analyzed the event in hydrological, geotechnical, material and structural point of views. The team admitted that it was a design, construction and management failure, which would have been counted as a natural disaster. So if you read more about this disaster, you will find that it is recorded as the worst engineering disaster in US history. So what Army Corps of Engineers had, have done after that was they updated the design and operation uh, manuals, guidelines uh, of the flood bands to accommodate high frequency floods and all, over the, all the other flows that were identified during the process. So I can remember many veteran engineers all over the world contributed a lot during the discussion, which was taken up very positively by the USC team. So our aim today is not to pinpoint any organization or a person, but to see what type of approach is more uh, suitable under Sri Lankan context to implement this type of uh, urbanization project. Uh, as part of explained, uh, this webinar was organized within a very short time with uh, when many discussions were going on in the mainstream news media and social media over Akram Samudra walking path. When collecting information uh, from the relevant organization, we found that this is not the only single project that is being currently implemented incorporating water bodies. So therefore, it is important to discuss this issue in depth. That is what we, the, our committee decided. So today's webinar will run as follows. We have four panel members, as mentioned earlier, to share their experience and knowledge related to the topic. We have requested each of them to take around 10 minutes to present their views in the first round. We will go to the second round if there are responses from the panel members to the other member presentations. Then the discussion, discussant will summarize, Dr. Misaka will summarize the presentations while bringing any additional facts as an outsider. Uh, due to the current pandemic situation, we, at least the panel, uh, cannot get together at the ISL premises, as you know. So we are talking remotely from various places. So please note that it will not be possible to allow verbal questions as we run this event as a webinar mode. Uh, during the presentation itself, you can post your questions in the chat box. I would direct the questions appropriately to the panel members and our young team of professionals in the water forum will ensure that all the questions and comments be saved so that it could be used in the future. If there is a positive outcome, water forum will consider to publish the findings as a report. Okay, to start with the panel members intervention, uh, Dr. Mantri Tilaka, uh, our first penalty, panelist, uh, is uh, he is not a stranger to our water forum community. Uh, how I like to uh, formally introduce him as, uh, uh, as follows. Uh, Dr. Mantri Tilaka, you can share the screen while I introduce you to the audience. Uh, sure. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mantri Tilaka joined as an engineer to Mahavali Development Board in 1977 and prematurely retired in, uh, from Mahavali Authority of Sri Lanka in 2002, 
as the uh, he was uh, then as the um, uh, director project management unit and also the environment and forest conservation division then he joined uh, international water management institute and led multinational research teams in many asian countries he served as uh, head of the central asia region and sri lanka and sri lanka of imi he is a visiting lecturer in several postgraduate institutes there are numerous publications uh, to his credit uh, the stage is yours dr mantri tilaka now uh, thank you uh, yeah w- one more point um, i will post this question i think it will be easy for you Roho. you are the first opening batsman <laughs> here <laughs> yeah yes. yeah so uh, now having worked in the environment <laughs> management division uh, dr mantri tilaka uh, uh, yes. in mali authority and country manager uh, of the imi Yes. Uh, you have a wide experience over social requirements and environmental concerns related with the water bodies. So, in development of water resources infrastructure, usually we consider direct benefits. Uh, can you elaborate new trends and also the requirements at ground level we have to consider in project planning rather than following traditional need analysis? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Engineer Vatra. Uh, good evening, everybody. I think I got a topic, uh, not engineering, but a little away from the engineering. So anyway, I will. Uh, I got ready with that kind of idea. Let me uh, start with a little bit a bigger environment rather than the walking track environment or the impact uh, of those things. I think we need to understand that uh, demand for water has, is changing. Uh, has changed actually uh, over the years. There's a spelling mistake. Anyway, has changed over the years. As as we thought earlier, it was uh, all our reservoirs or tanks, what we call uh, more or less uh, single purpose. They are actually not. They already served as multi-purpose, you know, drought mitigation, flood control, and uh, ameliorating deficiencies in supplies of water for irrigation and drinking and ecosystem services and all that apart uh, so now we need to consider certain other uses from this uh, water bodies that's uh, some are tangible some are intangible some are in stream some are off stream some are consuming water some are non-consuming water now in our case the topic we are talking about non-consumptive water uses that's becoming popular uh, around the world because of the stresses created by the society and economy and also. So we always need to think about any water body, stream or reservoir or aquifer or you call it what, and all those water resource sources are multi-purpose. So from that point of, we, we set our mind. Then we need to understand the society is changing. So the needs of the people, demands of the people, value systems are changing. It's contrasting some, sometimes in developed countries and developed countries, developing countries, poor countries, and again, urban areas and rural areas, the needs and demands and concerns are contrasting there. Concerns also vary because uh, if you look at the urban areas, urban environment, urban water bodies are used for something else, whereas the rural water bodies are used for something else. Their main focus is for different things. And of course, uh, thereby the mindset also different. The urban people have a different mindset on that, uh, on a water body, uh, whereas rural people have a different. Uh, just imagine, uh, you know, Talavatuguru lakes and other urban lakes, Candy lakes and Kurnagar lakes, people love to have their houses in front of the lake visualizing things because they're uh, sitting, urban sitting, their work practices, work uh, job needs and all that is different to what the farmers or rural area people need for a water body, from a water body. They are not coming to jog or walk around or uh, see the nature or uh, enjoy the vision, sometimes they may, but not the regular or interest on that. So these are different things we need to understand when we are thinking about those things. And again, third point, I would like to talk about the communication approaches. Now, earlier 
if something happens in Anuradhapura, Japna, Umatara, Kalambu people will get to know through the radio in the evening or tomorrow uh, in the newspapers. Whereas now, things are instantaneous. Even the young people can report anything happening on site on, on, on the running time. So social media is becoming more powerful. Mass media has to catch up. So they also try to stir and bring these things as a different thing. And of course, uh, through those both sources, voices and opinions are created. Earlier, the opinions or voices are created uh, by educated or respected people. Now anybody, even school child can raise his opinion. You, if he put something into the social media, whether he's 15 years or 50 years, nobody will know, but the idea will go through uh, the society or networks in viral form. So we need to be mindful of these changes in communication approaches. So we need to be ready to respond to these kind of situations. And in those slides, our role as professionals also changing. And if we don't change, we will become dinosaurs, relaxing. We need to perceive things differently. There's no more the status we enjoy sometime back 50, 60 years ago, even yesterday. There have been our opinions, our suggestions, our work is being challenged. So we need to learn and adopt to this new paradigm. We need to be wise and rise with knowledge. We need to be uh, credible knowledge advisors rather than mere technicians in the future. So this is becoming very important among us professionals and we need to be uh, uh, very thorough in what we are doing and around what is happening around us. We need to be responsive and adapt to the situation. Coming back to the topic which we are talking about, we need to be mindful. I, I read a couple of articles uh, recent days about the nature trails in Kampaha and some other areas. Uh, there's a difference between nature trails and jogging tracks. And uh, the purpose and the interest may be slightly different, maybe one uh, slightly include the other but their purposes, their objectives, the places they are being built is different. So we need to be mindful. I'm not going to talk about the safety aspect, engineering aspects, because my colleagues are there, they will talk about. So we need to come to doing these things, whatever nature trails or jogging tracks or dam construction or irrigation system construction. We need to be mindful about our direct responsibilities. We need to now, even uh, engineering aspects, if we have done something in the late 50s or 60s or even uh, 80s, early 80s, there was no uh, talk about climate change or environmental impact assessment and various other things. So now we are talking about climate change, rapid changes in the climate and certain uh, rapid uh, rainfalls and flood waves and sort of things return areas which we have experienced earlier may not be valid anymore. We need to rethink about this, recalculate. Uh, we need to think about our dam safety. Most of our dams are earth dams. So the bump topping is possibility. They are flash with the flash floods and all that. So we need to monitor systems, set up monitoring system. I think Dr. Itarana will talk about this uh, and upgrade uh, our knowledge as well as our equipment uh, installed in the these structures to see what's going on with the new conditions, new uh, situations. As uh, Engineer Badra mentioned, the uh, design factors, coefficients, and principles, we need to revisit and upgrade those things according to new conditions. As I always talk to you, uh, it's no more stationary hydrologic system we are living in. It's dynamic. It's, it must be based on scenario situations. Now, uh, on top of that, we have a peculiar situation. We, we feel we are running into a financial crisis. We, 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 our country is economically in a very trivial situation now. Uh, 
So the Mayaka investment we have, the little money we have, we need to invest uh, with the best justifications, best choices we need to. So we need to know, and if you are spending that, where we spent and for what we spent and need to be very thorough about it. And of course, in this kind of situation, uh, livelihoods. Now, the case of uh, Parakrama Samudro Kantale, we need to be very live to the livelihood issues of those people. Those uh, dams are Kantale and Bolonar Parakrama Samudra, Giritali and all that. They have a heritage value. People will read them. On top of that, there are a lot of people their livelihoods are dependent on them. So it's not Candy Lake or Bere Lake or some other lake in uh, Colombo, but here it is their livelihood. It's not it's their jobs, their survival. So we need to be mindful when touching them and using them for any other purpose. It's true, It's uh, we are talking about uh, non-consumptive, non-intrusion uh, activity, very easy to do this jogging tracks and all that, but we need to be mindful of all those things. We need to be, we, we could be very good technical engineers, water resources, civil engineers, but understanding the uh, social engineering part or doing the social engineering is not uh, easy. There's no prescription for that. So we need to be mindful then. With that, I wind up my uh, introduction to all of my few words on this panel. Thank you. Over to you, Bala. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mandarijaka. It was fantastic. Uh, I think you can uh, unshare the uh, presentation and then we can go to uh, Mr. Karnaratna's. Uh... Thank you. Mr. Somaratna, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mr. Somaratna, um, uh, I, I will introduce first uh, uh, Ms. Somaratna. He, he has joined the UDA in 1966 as a planning officer after graduation from University of Sri Jayavadanapura in BSc State Management and Valuation and obtained diploma, diploma in Project Management in University of Moratua. Then he obtained the Master in uh, town and country planning at uh, University of Murtu again, and followed several local and foreign courses in, in the field of uh, physical planning and project management. He was he worked uh, in several districts in the island and now work in Anuradhapura as the provincial director for uh, NCP uh, and, uh, province. And then uh, in addition to that, he is the additional project director for Anuradhapura Integrated Urban Development Project. Uh, I am uh, grateful to uh, Mr. Somaratna for agreeing to join us today as uh, architect uh, Harshandi Silva, uh, who agreed earlier, could not join uh, due to unavoidable reasons. So uh, you were notified only today morning. Uh, so it's uh, great that uh, we have uh, with uh, you today. Without the views of the urban planner, this panel uh, discussion would not have completed uh, uh, its objective. So I would like to pose the following question to you, uh, Mr. Somaratna. Uh, UDA is given the responsibility uh, by the government for preparing plans uh, for urban development. At the inception of your organization, that is in 1978, UDA's role was confined to the Colombo district. Now, a large number of municipal council areas are under the purview of UDA as far as planning is concerned. So can you elaborate the important facts taken into consideration in urban planning, especially when it comes uh, in ancient cities such as Anuradhapur and Polnaru, where your uh, area is uh, concerned, especially. So and uh, as an engineer, I'm curious to know why the inland water bodies are incorporated so much by the urban planners? Okay, uh, now yeah. it's time to you, uh, Ms. Somarada. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Good evening to all of you. Uh, uh, as Ms. Badra said, yes, uh, UDA uh, uh, established 1978. And first of all, I wish to my sincere thanks uh, to uh, IESL who gave me this opportunity to share the uh, things with you. 
uh, uh, I have, uh, uh, can we share this presentation? Uh, Sent to you? Yeah, Palita, yeah. Yeah, yeah. can you please come? Yeah, yes, I think I heard I have only 10 minutes, so I will rush up to uh, the presentation. Uh, your topic is okay, usage on island, uh, inland water bodies for recreational. Um, Urban Development Authority established in 1978, and uh, now we have passed uh, several decades uh, in urban planning and physical planning. So that we uh, we uh, island wide, we have all declared uh, more than uh, 270 local authorities island wide, including all MCs and uh, all UCs. Up to now, we have prepared uh, more than uh, 75 development plans island wide. Uh, by this plan, we have give, given a guidance how to develop the particular area as urban development area. It might be a, a municipal council area. It may be a urban council area or the Pradi Sabha. Uh, the particular area is planning and, uh, by a chartered town planner, a physical planner, uh, as a teamwork. The team consisted of with, uh, you know, that uh, planners, architects, engineers, sociologists, uh, architects, and, uh, you know, archaeologists. All the team consisted of uh, uh, for this particular issue. Then actually, uh, can you kind of go to the second slide? Yeah, uh, within this uh, limited time, I will explain the role of a plan. Uh, so uh, by the uh, act, we have assigned to do a physical plan uh, per particular urban area under the national physical plan prepared by the national physical plan department. Uh, this department have guided a structure plan for the island. And then we are doing, uh, under that umbrella, we are doing a plan for a particular urban area uh, declared as urban area by the UD Act. So in this case, uh, the urban plan um, uh, has a role to have a far visit of uh, uh, area planning. Uh, this includes uh, uh, this generic code, uh, integrated uh, planning. Uh, this integrated means uh, we uh, normally integrate uh, these main four pillars, economic, uh, social, uh, environment, and physical. Uh, these main four pillars are the uh, main concerns of integrated planning. Uh, this plan must be a document uh, for the uh, emphasizing economic development of the country or the particular area. And this plan is a physical plan. Uh, it, uh, it has some physical development projects identified by the plan. Uh, then this plan is an environment concern plan because uh, most of the uh, areas declared by the UDA consisted with the environment sensitive uh, and or archaeological uh, sensitive or whatever sensitive area or the NBRO, whatever sensitive area with the more concerns of the environment. So we should concern environment aspects and the social. Uh, under this integrated planning, social concern is also very much important. These plans uh, prepare for the people. So uh, this must be, uh, must be accepted by the people. Uh, uh, in the UDA vision also, we, we have uh, considered um, social acceptances. So, under these main four pillars, we prepare a plan for an urban development area uh, that is consisted with the uh, multidisciplinary uh, you know, professions. As I earlier mentioned, um, this plan uh, prepared for a, a particular time period in the future. It might be five years, 10 years. Uh, all the physical development, economic development, social development, uh, environmental improvements are consistent in this plan. The main role of the plan is to prepare a space, a place making arrangements. The place where we live in and around, by this plan, we try to our best to give a good place for a people. Uh, that is why I explained earlier, this plan must be uh, integrated aspects. 
So all inclusive plan. Uh, further, we can elaborate this uh, integrated versions uh, for uh, cultural events also. And then uh, preparation of place, whatever the uh, uh, internal place or the external place, the plan must be a um, far sighted. How to optimization of the use of the base. And then uh, a person who live or, or the community to this area uh, must be feel this plan has been worked for the people. So uh, when we uh, prepare development plan for a particular area, we studied the above aspects. Uh, in this forum, we have limited for uh, the water, inland water resources, uh, usage of inland water bodies for recreationals. If we narrow down this uh, entire planning process, uh, easily we can say water is our historic elements, is our historic elements. If we see the ancient evolution of the civilizations, uh, it become with us. Uh, that is called historic civilizations. Uh, from Sri Lankan context, water bodies, uh, rivers, canals, and other water areas are so much concern in planning because uh, it is a historic uh, uh, things. It is a cultural things. It is a historic thing. And then this all together by concerning and the uh, utmost uh, handling of this sensitive uh, topic, we can uh, use these uh, resources for economic uh, benefits of the country. Uh, the plans must give the development or the increment of the uh, social standards, living standards, economic uh, level of the people. Uh, that is why we always uh, discuss under this plan preparation stage. This is participatory approach. Uh, those days it was a up bottom approach. Now we normally realize uh, this is not the way Mm, it's called uh, advocacy planning, but now we uh, normally practice the participatory approach. That is why we have several stages in planning process to follow, uh, to cope with the uh, voice of the people, general public who receives the plan. Uh, so then we are normally concerned in these all elements. Other, other, on the other way around, uh, that is, uh, a special quality. Uh, if, it's, if, we, if we take uh, the parcel of land, if we take an uh, urban area, uh, we have several types of land, uh, wasteland, open land, the economic high potential lands, water bodies, uh, forest, sometimes wildlife like Noralia, wildlife sanctuary. Uh, most of the cities have a water body which is a historic evolution. Uh, in the evolution of the uh, cities, there, is, there are some uh, you know, water bodies and canals in the city. Uh, if we consider this uh, uh, Pradisabha level, in the village level, the countryside, there are also uh, enough water resources. Uh, comparatively, the other land usages, the spatial quality of the water bodies are too much high. Uh, that is why uh, uh, normally we have uh, a, 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 a segment called PROS plan in the urban development plan. The PROS plan, uh, we include uh, open space for the public. We open up open space for the public. Uh, it might be a park, a water recreation area, a ground, playground, or whatever the public space public outdoor recreational plan. That is called the special qualities is very high in water bodies. In urban plan, 
generally we emphasize this uh, water areas to use the maximization of the usage by keeping by protecting the the sensitivity of the asset uh, this can be used for uh, in simple say this can be used for uh, recreational activities a simple say a water body is used for various activities uh agriculture purposes industrial purposes or the uh, drinking water and most of the many of activities some water bodies are in the city area a declared area are used only for the recreational activities for instance in uh, amradpur kubichankulam tank recently developed by the uda with the help of slrdc now it is only for use for the recreational purposes we have developed the 3 km walkway with other facilities but uh, in uh, same place in amradpur the nora river used for both purposes both tech uses agriculture as well as the recreational in kurnagal lake for example it uses for the drinking water purposes and the recreational likewise these uh, resources can be used in several ways optimizing the demands the area in my earlier presenters explained the value of this uh, the, the frontage of the water bodies very high demand and then uh, there are some uh, direct and indirect benefits of this uh, development of the water bodies uh, for recreation and other facilities the main concern of this uh, development is to enhance the existing resources the quality of the area and there are some direct benefits the people of the area can be uh, use this uh, direct and indirect there are some economic uh, benefits by this uh, development uh, for example uh, directly uh, using while using the uh, physical uh, you know uh, exercise so whatever the same time the economic benefits there some some there are some economic uh, activities just adjoining to this process uh, small vendors or the other uh, economic activities are taking place only other hands you know the same example uh, some other tanks developed by the uda early it was a, sometime it was a dumping site for the citizen uh, city dwellers as well as the commuters of the area after this development they are they are there is a, a indirect benefits we can easily observe the water body because we have opened up the access around and in and around this water body i think these are the there are many many direct and indirect benefits uh, yeah next second, next one please so likewise then i will show you uh, uh, some uh, uh, places this is uh, developed by the uda this is uh, open discussion i can uh, give some uh, information to you next one please yeah it was a very uh, congested place before this uh, pandemic uh, morning and the evening time uh, there is 3 and 100 3 and 100 uh, 3. One kilometer length, good place. Next one, please. Yeah, then this is Kurnagala uh, Lake around, developed by the UDA with the assistance of municipal council and the provincial council. And next, please. You know these places. What I wanted to show is we have already used these places earlier. Next one, please. And even in Anuradhapur. i earlier mentioned the kumichangulam the page payment place and already we have planned with the help of uh, local authority municipal council education department 
uh, agriculture department. Uh, we have planned some other places to develop because Amradpur, ancient city, if I say that this Amradpur only, ancient city with Varunarva, ancient city normally convey the people more than 2 million uh, for poet days. The main poet days, Vesak Pason, and other special days. We think uh, Mahameuna is enough for these people, but uh, providing some other uh, facilities for the people, we need some other improvements, other infrastructure development in around the lake area in Namradapura. We have planned these places, uh, nearly five tanks we have selected, Abbey Vava, Basakulam Vava, and Nura Vava. Um, normally in this uh, Tirappane uh, lake, we have planned some places uh, with, the, with the help of the uh, department and the other relevant agencies, stakeholder agencies, to have a good place by protecting this uh, place. And then I go rush. And uh, under this uh, today discussion, we have focused this Polonnaruva uh, Parakam Samudre uh, walk path matter. And I will now, this is under discussion. We started the project with the help of the education department. Actually, this project. What was not uh, uh, you know overnight uh, application? This has discussed in last six months, uh, direct and indirect uh, team. Especially we addressed this all the teams in uh, district development coordinating committee, and we planned it. A preliminary development plan prepared by the UDA uh, with the consideration of the service-oriented uh, economic development with the maximization of the uh, paddy cultivation and the uh, historic uh, asset. In this plan, uh, we have already identified uh, recreational area, uh, economic development area, as well as the uh, tourism development area. If we take this uh, Parakam Samudra uh, walkway, uh, then we have already started, uh, you can see Deepoyana just behind the entering the Ponarua city. Uh, we have planned this in, from the point of Parakrama Rame uh, towards town area. We have started this project. I think you can see some uh, uh, landmark in Deepuyana. Uh, this was a phase one of this uh, project. Now we have completed. And then, and then we want to extend this project towards the new town area. And then we have selected the space two on the Band area with the lengthy discussion with the uh, uh, relevant parties. And then phase two is start from the uh, museum up to uh, new town. If I say, Two, three, one, phase one from Deepoyana to uh, uh, Dam area up to Bodhulvihare, and then near to town area. These three stages are the plan by the UDA doing future. And then uh, already you, you know this dam used by the vehicle, um, uh, a small uh, asphalt road is available on the top of the dam. And then uh, riprap also developed by the election department. And we discussed with the uh, uh, professionals, engineers uh, in the department of education. And we got these, uh, you know, other stakeholder clearances, archeology, span irrigations, provincial municipal council, and this development coordinating committee. And we uh, estimated and we handed over this project to the irrigation department. They were very uh, keen on this project because we planned this project uh, at the beginning to work with the irrigation department because this is a very sensitive place we know, we have understand. And we handed over this project to the irrigation department with the discussion. And they started to uh, preparation, ground preparation work. You can see the 
proposed uh, uh, 3D images in down, up down of the presentation. This is the presentation, but we uh, wanted to uh, develop as a walk path in the dam site. And then you can see a small section of the project. Uh, actually, this project implemented to be implemented by the education department. They give this section um, as a team. We started this project. Uh, uh, our third uh, speaker is uh, engineer uh, Abhay Sirivadana. Um, Again, he is not a stranger to the ISL community. He graduated from University of Peradeniya and now a fellow of ISL. Presently, he is the director of irrigation water management in the irrigation department. He is a member of a member representing public sector in the engineering council of Sri Lanka and also the president of association of public service engineers, uh, having membership of entire public sector engineers. So he has extensive experience in the field of uh, civil engineering and other social related activities for more than, more than 28 years, mainly in the government sector and about three years in private sector. He has given uh, written books on uh, irrigation management, irrigation projects in Sri Lanka, hydraulic civilization of Sri Lanka and public, uh, also about the public service uh, engineers issues. And also he has published many paper articles about the engineering profession in national newspapers. He's a visiting lecturer uh, in many training institutes. Uh, with that introduction, uh, you can see Mr. Abhay is uh, uh, doing his presentation from the irrigation department main uh, auditorium and he's surrounded by uh, some uh, specialist uh, engineers. So most of the uh, 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 questions that has been raised already will be uh, addressed by them and not along by him. Uh, Mr. Abhay Sirvadana, uh, you represent today uh, the irrigation department as the custodian of the large number of uh, man-made water bodies in the country, which includes reservoirs, canal systems, uh, flood protection schemes, and many more. So it is not only the safe uh, operation and management of these structures you look after, but the health of the riverine system and wetlands uh, associated with these systems. On top of that, the original purpose of the schemes getting changed very fast due to the demand of the society. So what are the challenges faced by the irrigation department in managing these systems? And let us know how the irrigation department, uh, and actually you are talking on behalf of other uh, water sector uh, organizations like MSL, or agrarian services and provincial council. So how those organizations handle the demand of the uh, resource accommodating uh, recreation activities. Uh, thank you very much. We uh, your flow now. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, and uh, first of all, I must thank uh, our former Director General of Irrigation Engineer Batra Kamaladas for organizing this event with the help of ISL and thanks to ISL. And also I must thank uh, our uh, present uh, Director General of Irrigation Engineer K.D. Nihal Sirivadana giving me the, uh, this opportunity to address uh, uh, you all in this subjects, very sensitive subject. Uh, and, uh, as uh, Madam explained, uh, about uh, three, four engineers around me now. I have our two additional director genders, uh, system management and uh, uh, construction and development, and uh, our the dam safety specialist and our uh, engineering material division, engineer Namali Alavatugoda, uh, and uh, Madhavalagam, sorry, uh, and uh, our chief engineer, dam safety uh, engineer Sudarsani, and uh, some few of us, and our range people uh, join over the swarm from the uh, range and district levels. So, uh, welcome you all for the presentation. Uh, I will uh, share my presentation uh, as the uh, irrigation department. Uh, yeah, then uh, I, I, I have. I try to complete as uh, as much as possible in scheduled time. Uh, already, I got many many questions in the chat box and conveyed to me. 
a lot of uh, answers in my presentation to those questions so as you know we started from uh, hydraulic civilization all other speakers also mentioned well, our first tank uh, built by king pandukabe in uh, 400 bc in anuradhapur area and thereafter uh, we cannot uh, forget our king parakramba built in our uh, ancient history and uh, all are talking about the war I mean, uh, not irrigation, it is uh, it's coming from uh, Sanskrit language for water. We are water department, not the irrigation department. And uh, their plan was uh, built to domestic water supply for city of Andhra in, in, in uh, that history. Uh, reserve, uh, reservoirs are not the tank, uh, well-designed ecosystem. There are a lot of values. As Dr. Mantri Tilaka mentioned, we are not just civil engineers. Now, after we are coming, joined to the department as civil engineers, but after joining here, uh, gaining the previous experience, we have become social engineers, partly. So, we have studied all the history of uh, irrigation in Sri Lanka. We have more than 2,000 years uh, history, irrigation history, but uh, written history started after King well according to Mahavansa. And uh, colonial last uh, 1,505 uh, uh, with uh, Portuguese and Dutch and uh, uh, British people and end up at 19 years, we had the colonial leader. Almost all the reservoirs were neglected and fully damaged during that era, according to our written history. Uh, uh, but uh, some renovations was done by British administration at, at the end of their session. Uh, all the renovations of ancient irrigation main systems actually successfully completed after forming irrigation department in 1915. Uh, uh, as irrigation department, uh, I have to talk about uh, all the values of our uh, reservoirs. Uh, we have a lot of values, actually, not, not, not only the uh, recreational values, we have a lot of economic values as well. So mainly uh, we have the agriculture value and environmental, forest and wildlife value, and uh, drinking water and industrial value is the big demand uh, according to the current scenario. So, and uh, hydropower and domestic use. Uh, we have uh, pipe-bound water only for the 51% uh, of the population. That balance is mostly covered by irrigation system in the rural community. And uh, tourism also another factor behind irrigation reservoirs and various entertainment activities and flood retention reservoirs, etc. Many, many values, as you all uh, mentioned from the irrigation reservoirs. Uh, and uh, if we go to the major medium dams in Sri Lanka, we have a lot of uh, institutions under water sector. And uh, uh, according to the international terminology, uh, under irrigation department, we have 86 major dams. And Mahavali Authority of Sri Lanka, we have 15 major dams, CEBC and Electricity Board, 9, and National Water Supply and Drainage Board, 4, and 9 Provincial Council, all together 15. And, 129 major dams uh, belongs to Sri Lankan institutions. And uh, medium also, we have about uh, uh, 284 mediums dams and all together, uh, 413 dams in Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, the, within the 103 main river basin. But I have to say you that uh, more than 50% of, of the major dams uh, were built by irrigation department uh, after 1900 and uh, out of that uh, new dams mostly built by uh, 1948 uh, independence. Uh, so uh, other, other economic values, if you refer to economic values of irrigation reservoirs, national food security is the main. Uh, without that we cannot survive. Uh, then uh, from that we have all the figures in the agriculture uh, sector, uh, especially from major irrigation, from uh, irrigation and Mahavali, 
we covered as irrigation 75 percent of the irrig uh, major irrigation and mahavali authority of sri lanka covered 25 percent of the major irrigation and all together uh, it's it's uh, uh, gained to 20 275 uh, billion uh, to the country from the food security and hydropower hydropower generation uh, provide 35 percent of national uh, peak demand provide from hydropower from these reservoirs and drinking water uh, we have uh, studied drinking water supply and many proposals received recently almost 40 percent of national demand covered from reservoirs other 60 balance is covered from our rivers inland fisheries also we have big uh, value to the gdp and uh, flood detention and disaster management and other big subject in our country handled by the irrigation department and also uh, we have to think about the job security of the farming community for uh, full-time farmers 20 percent of the population that's a huge uh, crowd and part-time farmers are 15 percent of the population and uh, maintain water table and groundwater recharge etc is a big value uh, simply speaking the entire countries depend on these uh, reservoirs and water bodies and uh, if you go to uh, tourism values with the reservoirs, actually, uh, I got the statistics from the tourism board. Uh, we have 4 billion uh, in the peak uh, level. Uh, we have 4 billion in 2018, uh, 4 billion US dollars uh, income to the country. Out of uh, this uh, 4 billion US dollars income, 17% represent the uh, wildlife uh, park related to irrigation schemes. So that is also, we had the discussion with the wildlife department. They gave its data uh, from min area uh, side. So this uh, min area covered and uh, several other, more than 30 uh, wildlife park covered with the irrigation and amalgamated to irrigation reservoirs. And uh, other uh, factor is the, the local and foreign tourists uh, and uh, uh, boat riding, et cetera. Earlier, this is, the, this is not uh, given approval due to various reasons. Now also we are not giving approval for engine boats, but pedal boats we have already allowed. Now that is Maharama. You can see if you are going to Katargam, it's like uh, Thailand now with the, uh, with the several recreational values. And uh, Kandela also in Aurelia, we have given approval this purpose and Borlas Gamu in the Kalambu area, we have given approval uh, for this kind of activities. Actually speaking, now uh, department is thinking in the different angle. Uh, we have to emphasize uh, the, uh, that matter in front of our director general and uh, uh, he's observing uh, these things and uh, he, he will consider all these uh, your uh, proposals, suggestions and any comments for his uh, formulations of new projects. And uh, uh, holiday bungalows, and uh, uh, that is another topic uh, around uh, irrigation reservoirs. Uh, we have constructed a lot of holiday bungalows for the wildlife department. When we are uh, doing a, uh, is a dam construction, we have to sign an M MOU with the wildlife and the forest. So in that case, uh, we have to give some provisions to uh, their circuit bungalows. So, so we, are, we have constructed from uh, our direct labor basis and handed over to them. Then we have got this information from wildlife department, a uh, lot of crowd visiting the, these circuit bungalows and we have the income, but uh, with this COVID-19 situation that is uh, drastically go down. But uh, this is local and foreign, uh, uh, tourists are visiting this circuit uh, bungalows. Uh, if you have gone to Dugamvera or Vehragala, uh, you can see uh, very attractive places uh, it is located. And uh, other cultural events also, we use this water and reservoirs. You know, the two uh, national functions are there, that water cutting ceremony, the Kapim in Kataragama and Kandy, Gatambe. So we have to provide I think uh, general public uh, do not know these things actually. Uh, the, these things happen, happen in normally in August during dry time in Katargama. 
Manik River, we have to issue water uh, from Veragala Reservoir for this ceremony especially. We have separate outlet from Veragala Reservoir for this purpose. And uh, any other uh, cultivation event in the uh, seed in uh, event or land preparation events and or harvesting events, they are organizing many cultural activities in the rural community. It has a big value. Our engineers are participating. I am myself also as divisional engineer for six years in Ambantota. I, I have participated several functions like this. Vap Magula or some other Devadane or a lot of things. A uh, lot of things. So it's a very attractive uh, uh, due to the irrigation life actually. It, it, that's why we, I am totally agree with Dr. Mantri Tilaka. We are uh, really social engineers. And uh, inland fish and same production. It is also related to our reservoirs. Uh, more than 90% this production is covered by our um, uh, major medium reservoirs. It, it's, uh, its contribution to the DGP is about 25 million. Uh, 25 uh, billion rupees. So this is also uh, given from the NACDA. And uh, it has a big value from our reserve. Uh, no, no one counted for these benefits. And uh, other, uh, other one is a new trend, the jogging path or walking path. New trend, actually. So, uh, all other speakers also speak about. Now only I have uh, trying to come to the topic, actually. Uh, up to now, we, we just mentioned some uh, background. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Sidi, uh, Abhisri Vardhana, may I disturb you? How, how many more minutes do you need? Uh, uh, I think another five minutes time, I will finish it. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, okay. Thank you. Then, uh, yes, madam. Uh, then, uh, a new trend in irrigation dams, as uh, our uh, UDA representative, our speaker mentioned, new trend. Attract, but, but this trend is attract to neighboring areas. But uh, farming community was not happy in the beginning when we are putting this jogging path. But they are, they are ch ch childhood is a li little uh, changing now, but uh, real farmers are little against now, but uh, young generation will be happy with this uh, gradually change in this stage now. Some technical issues also identify uh, good for selected uh, locations. Uh, we, we have to recommend technically for selected location. Uh, but some ancient dam should not be modernized like this. That is our view. And uh, if we go to the topic directly, this the uh, history of Parakana Samudra built by, uh, I, I got the question from the chat box, uh, asking several questions about this matter, uh, built by great king Parakram Bahu in 1153 and 1159 AD and fully breached during colonial era. Uh, it is abandoned for more than centuries, according to R.L. Brohira's booklet. Uh, we have all this data in our, in our library and record, plan record room. Madam Kamaladasa prepared the record room for the irrigation department, and we have kept all this secured, actually, and uh, some, something digitized also. Then uh, rebuilt in uh, 1944 and filled for first time in 22nd February, 1944 by irrigation department uh, after centuries. If you read the Brohier's booklet, you can uh, see all the details. Then capacity, earlier capacity was 98,000 and 18,150 acres. Later rehabilitated three times, 1978 and 2012 and 2014. During yeah, about- uh, Mr. Abhishek, uh, shall I- uh, uh, intervene at this point. Shall we yeah. uh, put, put up this uh, yeah. slide uh, when, when that uh, question comes uh, during the question time? Actually, a lot of questions are there directed to the irrigation department. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, um, if it is uh, the history, uh, shall we rush to the next slide? Or, uh, okay, okay, or, okay, okay. And then okay. Uh, 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 we can we can come to you um, uh, for many other things uh, later on. Right, madam. Then uh, I will go to next slide. This uh, only the, I think two or three slides more. It will finish now. This is the dam section. Everything we have is stability analysis, all the design, everything we have. Without that, uh, we, irrigation department is not doing anything. Uh, but uh, I have to say simply with this uh, jogging path, 
uh, no any considerable effect to the dam safety uh, safety factors uh, from this jagging path. So, with compared to the huge dam body, this uh, uh, jogging path is very simple, like a small bird in elephant's body. Like uh, like that, uh, it's a very simple. Uh, all those who know the design in engineering. You can analyze with the small weight compared to the huge dam body. Uh, so we have a uh, lot of challenges during discussion time. Uh, we can uh, discuss about these challenges. We, uh, we, we, are, we are ready to change, Madam Irrigation Department, as you are given the guidance necessary earlier also. We are ready to uh, change with the uh, present scenario, no matter. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, this uh, all the uh, all the this this session organized by the ISL will be treated as a brainstorming session by the irrigation department. That's why I'm head of the department here. All additional director generals are here. So we, we take your ideas, proposals, and constructive criticism are highly uh, considered for future uh, projects and planning. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rajana. Sorry for um, making uh, many disturbances, but due to this time limit, I had to yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> rush you yeah. because um, I, I yeah. think you will get more uh, time uh, during the discussion time. That is uh, what I noticed. So yeah. uh, shall we go to the uh, last uh, panel member before going to the moderator? Uh, and, I... uh, the discussion. Uh, uh, our uh, final panelist is Dr. Uh, Nihal Vitaran, uh, who joins us uh, from Australia. Thank you, Nihal, for joining us today, despite your very uh, heavy work schedule. Uh, Dr. Nihal Vitaran has over 35 years uh, professional experience in uh, consulting, uh, having worked on major civil infrastructure projects spanning dams, water, uh, road, rail, uh, roads and bridges, tunnels and hydropower. Uh, he is a graduate from uh, University of Morotu. Uh, Nihal holds a PhD in Structural Engineering, uh, uh, ME in Geotechnical Engineering and MBA in Technology Management. Related to uh, dam engineering, Nihal has undertaken more than 600 dam safety reviews uh, with individual uh, PAR population at risk uh, assessments uh, in excess uh, uh, of 1 million uh, uh, numbers. Then Nihal has also acted as an independent reviewer for dam projects at an individual capex in excess of uh, Sri Lankan rupees 200 billion. He serves on Australia National Committee on Large Dams, the Committee on Concrete Gravity Dams and Design Against Earthquakes. He also serves on International Society of Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering Committee on Geotechnical Risk. Uh, Nihal, even though you are living and working in Australia, you are a uh, volunteer consultant to the Irrigation Department and resource person participating in our seminars organized by IESL and other professional bodies. So we now want to focus our today's panel discussion to the current hot topic actually, walking track in Parakram Samudra, which compelled us to discuss this issue in general. So you have visited many uh, of the reservoir headworks uh, on, on, on the irrigation, uh, invitation of the irrigation department while on holidays in Sri Lanka. So you are the best person to compare the situation in Sri Lanka with the Australian situation, uh, where dam safety has been practiced to the highest standards. Uh, in the world uh, with the immense experience and knowledge on dam safety and geotechnical engineering. Can you tell us uh, what will be the best approach the dam owners should take uh, uh, for this kind of demands? Thank you. Thanks, Madhra, for the generous um, uh, you know, profile about me. And as you know, it's 11, close to 11 o'clock at night. Um, three days ago, Badra rang and said, Nani Nihal, me, me ka kalla din so I thought I can't refuse what Badra asked. So what I am trying to say is give me an engineering background uh, on why uh, we should not just go and disturb the top of an ancient dam, like whether you know, locals like uh, jo jogging track upstream, downstream, or jogging track was a safety of people is not, not none of my business. And we can discuss that later uh, if we require, but my one is technical now. Badra asked me to give a background because, of course, we are great ancient dam builders. I left Sri Lanka in 1984. So that that's, things have changed. Now, just because other reasons, when we build or modify a dam, 
we can't enhance the risk, which basically say we can kill people. You know, it's, it's, it's not acceptable to kill a person and say, look, I gave you a jogging track or something. Sorry, but jogging track is better than your life. We can't give that message to their children. That's what we had to get into our mind. Now, in most international jurisdictions, retarding basins, I know people say borrelas come on ice and all that, they are classified as dams because if they fail, people downstream can get killed. I will show that in the later slide. So it's when we deal with the dam, especially existing dam, which Mr. Basin was then said breached in 19 during colonial era, we, it's metastable. It's about to be destabilized. You know, blink of something else. It's nearly happened in, I heard, 1978. So that's um, even flood design basins are now uh, built in Karambu. I don't know whether they even they have a, a dam break and whether people know where, when it fails, where we, water will go at what velocity, what depth. These are current, currently, uh, you know, legislative power in Australia. If I go and change, for example, uh, this Parakrama Samudra without expert advice, without signing off, Looking at that cross section, probably I have been charged by the um, prosecutors here. There's no if I will be charged, and probably I will be surrounded by lawyers, and probably they are going to take on my house. Simple definition of a dam. You know, earlier used to be 15 meter big. That's it, that's all gone. That discarded and discredited. Now a dam is, if it fails, irrespective of factor of safety, how many people reviewed it, sign off, director general, minister is irrelevant. If it fails, that water will travel fast below city at the depth. If there are at least one person in an inundation area with a depth of 0.3 meters, that's classified as a dam. It's not in Australia, it's in UK, USA, Finland, Philippines. You know, I have working currently do a lot of projects in the Philippines. That's a low. So a small retarding basin can be classified as a dam, which attracts a lot of responsibility to the owner. If the owner um, disregard his responsibility, he will be charged under criminal law. Dam is a special structure. When it fails, behind that water will come. One cubic meter of one cubic meter of second water is equal to 40 bags of 20 kilogram cement hitting you at every second. That's not very nice. It's very painful. So it kill people. So how do we determine a dam or no dam? People have to do a dam break, which is on sunny day, like what happened on Nambatale, sunny day, it breaks. We had to see where the water will go and um, how many people will get killed, what warning time. And other one is what called flood demand, like uh, overtopping, like Parakrama Samudri, I think 1978, didn't overtop, but from a wa uh, water, uh, but it nearly overtopped from a uh, wave height, wave. I saw one superintendent telling on the uh, some video yesterday, it came like a lizard back. That means it's nearly breached. Lucky if it, uh, it didn't breach, if it breached, probably it would have killed thousands of people. This, we are not talking about Katharina, 1,300 people with uh, Badra said in US. I was involved in the incident. It, they had plenty of warning time. So that that needs good engineering. It's not he said, she said, or cat's mom said, you know, putting it bluntly, it needs good engineering. And it has to be documented and, and a copy needs to be have with the state uh, emergency service, or I do Sri Lanka, it's called building research D department. Like some juris jurisdiction, it is enshrined in the cabinet because nobody can change it. So law required this assess for every new existing and dam modification. So I don't even Parakrama Samudra had such undertaken at all with this modification. Then dam break mapping. This is a small pond. I just put 64,000 cubic meters. I don't know how many in gallon, very small. You can see it's a dam break with the red color say where the water goes. This is around a small road, impounding water. So that should be there. That's that's a must for any modification and any existing dam. So I have traveled a few Giritale, Minneri, and some in down south. 
I couldn't find any of those uh, with the uh, irrigation department or whoever owned them. This is, I just put a bad dam, you know, people say everywhere, I like few days, everybody is sending me texts and asks if I build this uh, Parakram. So I said, no, I had nothing to do with it. Now, everybody is expert these days, one way, because it's, they can easily go to Google and cut and paste. So this is a dam, is small dam failed, no filters, very similar to what happened around Kantali. Water came around the pipe, not in the pipe, because poor detailing and it breached in the first uh, spilling. Uh, about eight years after construction. Nothing left after about half an hour. Now, this, this cross section, uh, I, I, I apologize to Badra if it is wrong. Somebody sent me, and it's very similar to what I saw from my UDA colleague. Now, this has problems just by looking at it. And I know Mr. Basilwan said this elephant got a rat mouse on its back. This is probably a bad mouse. If water comes to similar height in 1978, this dam will breach. I put some comments behind. I know you guys may say, oh, it has been expert. You know, I am no expert. I have seen this. If I do this cross section and put on a, this extreme has a dam. It's, I think, about 140 gigaliters. If that fails, probably we are talking about thousands of people getting killed, not, not hundreds like Kantali. So now I send this one to Badra to get some answers. But if even one is no, I think most will be no. Somebody can prove me I am wrong. We got a problem. First, before do anything with the dam, Chris, somebody has to go and look at the existing dam. Now, do we know the hazard category of this dam, I, irrigation department? I don't know. If it is extreme, people would not touch it. Just go and bulldoze uh, reprep to the reserve yeah, and end up on newspapers what is the dam return period at what not 1978 it's a wave what at what return period water will go to the crest of the dam is if it is extreme i doubt i i am fully confident it's extreme we are looking talking about probable maximum flood that means this dam cannot be over top as soon as it's over top it will breach it's a uh, Sand is silty sand. That material is breaching. I have been to Giritali as well. Do we have a proper dam bag? Probably not. Do you have emergency inundation mapping? If you have one, it should be with the police. Probably not. Do we, do we have a comprehensive dam safe review? International law required. Serves USBR everywhere. Ten years. Probably not. Do we know the safety and slope instability? Probably not. Do we have filters in the dam? Definitely not. These are old dams, they don't have. They, as I said, in, filter is very important for any dam, even basin, because once you have a filter, you can do what we call blue murders upstream. Do we know the construction history? No, probably, you know, kings probably made records, but they got lost. Do we know the soil types and erosion potential? Probably not, but it is highly erosive. I have seen this one. Do you have instrumentation, except peto methods in the dam? My take is no. So when they have no's, if somebody asks me, Nihal, will you modify this dam, Christ? I said, if I were you, I would never touch it without thorough studies and signed off by relevant experts. You don't pick up an expert just because he or she is your friend. It's a panel. I am sitting on few panels in currently Philippines. It's a hundred meter high dam with accelerated ground, peak ground accelerated 1.3 G. It could four review experts and we four of us uh, don't agree at, at anything at all. So that's how constructive the discussion and robust discussion should be. Apparent concern with this modification. As I see it, again, I give the you know, benefit of the doubt to the people who involved, approved. Reprep removal appears to have compromised the overall existing safety level. Yes, it is because it's nearly breached in 1978. And if same breach come tomorrow, it will definitely breach because the crest is nothing to something to be stability, but what we call piping, it's a desiccated cracking 
where water goes and no filters, it will breach the dam. Kantale happen along the barrel. This will happen through the crest of the dam. Rip prep is too steep to be stable under stake. If a wave comes hit, rip prep needs to be stable. If I am wrong, uh, you can, guys can correct me. I think most Asian uh, guy, de uh, irrigation department guidelines say no filters upstream in one, one is one vertical to three horizontal. It doesn't seem to be, it seems to be about some 70 degree angle. Two is trip. Too steep rip prep would crack the dam longitudinally because it drags the down the crest of the dam down, so it will crack horizontally. What happens is when it rains, it gets filled with water that will itself manifest to upstream and downstream failures. There's a dam here, it has happened without crest thing, but constructed too steep. The water will go under the brick wall and pipe, which I call water travels through the crack. The crest. That's a very serious issue. That's what I, we call sunny day failure. Removal of gravel bedding under the riprap is a bad design detail itself because I read somewhere 1978 after the event, one gentleman said they put one meter gravel before hand placing boulders. They knew what they were doing. But that gravel layer provides a lot of benefit to the riprap when the wave hits reverse hydraulic gradient otherwise soil particles will come through the riprap it's a maintenance issue, but ongoing it will manifest if it dries out desiccated cracking it will pipe through dam has no if internal defenses such as clay on filters that's fine kings didn't do but they did a good job but now we seems to be going messing things up without studying uh, in detail and vibration itself is as i said these are metastable stable dams Current exposed surface definitely compromises the flood security. Yes, uh, as I said, uh, flood and wave come together. Sometimes wave come first and then the flood. Uh, yes, it has. And drying out will cause desiccated cracking, you know, pr prone to piping, very similar to Kantala in the rivers. And more importantly, now I know every internet, uh, Buddhist monks go, everybody doing newspaper articles. Normally, when we undertake work like this, there's an international law. You, when you do modification, you can't compromise the existing safety level of the dam. That means all effort should be made, taken to ensure if a flood comes now, now time in Sri Lanka was six o'clock, flood comes now, there's no repress. This is going to break. So where is the contingency plan? You don't go and bulldoze the things without a contingency plan. And even if you do reprep, you remove reprep in 100 meters carefully. So when the flood comes, you put them back very quick. Now, uh, if anybody can say if rain comes in next four hours, it will be sandbagged, I'll be surprised. So another thing is I read somewhere, somebody said, yeah, I don't read this, this take too much information. Reprep is not, I said, just dump rock. They say, oh, we are going to put the rock back. That's good. That's good in paper, but you know it's a reprep and bedding underneath scientific based on good geotechnical and dam risk. What we call dam risk, we do a, a portfolio risk assessment and we do event risk. We do Monte Carlo simulation. We use a thing called piping toolbox. It's developed by USB. That need a lot of input and then check the risk versus what's called FN curve, uh, probability of failure versus loss of life. It's a universal curve where we had to stay be, uh, underneath, otherwise we are putting public at risk. If I put the numbers here, it will just show public at, at the brink of risk. Now the riprap also dissipating uh, energy from the wave and absorbing energy. So, you know, it's, and it's a science. And proper bedding as a filter underneath, it's not putting rocks there, it has to be properly designed. And that, more, that layer will do a lot of jobs. It's not stability like a mouse sitting on an elephant. It's that the, that point, the moisture, which stop the piping happens and progress because when the soil is dry, it will erode through very quickly. You can do a pinhole test and irrigation lab, dry and wet sample, dry sample will pipe through very quickly, but not the wet one. So people know these things. Um, now, if number six, 
my thing if for arc some of the overtops tomorrow it will be a erosion very rapid you don't have much more warning time and number 7 when the dam breaches it would not given much warning time my estimate because it's 8 km you need to breach at one section it will open up 300 400 meters very quickly so don't think of just putting the riprap by act plus assign accountability with criminal consequences so there should be one owner if it is irrigation it's their dam they are responsible nobody else if it is uda it is their dam if uda come and uh, work on the irrigation department dam irrigation has to be responsible why they give uda because that's the law here uh, i was in all in uh, hungary about 3 meter high dam failed and killed three people straight away they got 13 directors put in the jail or remand i asked the colleague they still they have not been charged they say yes but uh, otherwise the uh, villagers will skin them skin them alive because you know they, 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 that's how some people would react now i just put you know ancient dams is one i did you know it, there are technologies to see where you can see those line where the failure mechanism happening and if water enters how it is going to break now don't repeat another kantali now i don't google normally for engineering but i thought google what happened kantali because i uh, passed through kantali with my wife about 6 years ago and at that time i saw guys digging up a pipeline i rang badrami and said badrami somebody is digging your uh, dam crest badra i think uh, she always do the right thing she rang straight away and said ask him to move away but she did it probably go after the police agents now what is this one mr jaising has given a good account of what happened at kantal let's look at it at the left bank sluice a crack open at the top of the bank and unusual sound happens so they all were there when it happens near the sluice apparently this is due to a previous day somebody went and did the pump station with minor uh, vibration as i said these are metal stable strict structures king's time done well but it's not to just go and do um, things saying oh it's good good for the community you had to compromise safety or community jogging and keeping fit before keeping fit we had to be alive that's the main thing and within 30 minutes it breached and 300 meters gap within 24 hours now nearly 300 people died and 16 houses got damaged my estimate it had some warning time so if it didn't have warning time and good work by the irrigation department at least we are talking about 200 plus people died in that one 20 times 100 it's normally say 10 minutes warning time will save 80% of the population who would otherwise die now next one his concluding remarks i thought uh, it caught my eye i hope that the kantale dam disaster would be first and the last major dam disaster in sri lanka because the irrigation department is now closely monitoring all major dams using modern technology now nearly 35 years later today are we are we there i think for the irrigation department and the audience to decide so thank you very much for listening and good night to you all yeah thank you very much nihal uh, you have as a typical dam safety engineer uh, you have uh, you were thinking about the extreme events and uh, that, that is the way i think dam safety evaluation should be done uh, he, nihal has pointed out a multitude of aspects for the uh, engineers to think uh, and differ in different uh, possibilities of failure modes of failure so he has provided different criteria to evaluate the project i hope uh, the irrigation as mentioned by engineer uh, abhay srivardhana he will they will take uh, up these points uh, into their evaluation and also uh, let, let let us hear from uh, the irrigation department officers uh, how uh, the responses uh, to the, their comments then uh, may, may i uh, request our discussant uh, dr misaka to uh, intern misaka uh, unfortunately we have uh, gone through i mean our time is very limited uh, 
Dr. I will just introduce Dr. Misaka. Our discussion today is a senior fellow at the World Wildlife Fund uh, in the USA and also global lead uh, trainer in uh, World Wildlife Fund uh, Flood Green Guide uh, program. So without going into more details, uh, Dr. Misaka, uh, as the discussant, you are given the task of summarizing the input uh, of the panel members and also add anything possible as an outsider to the, this episode. You, this floor is yours now. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks again uh, to uh, engineer, Madam. Uh, for the Kamaldas and IESL uh, for giving me this opportunity and a big thanks to all the panelists for their valuable in, uh, insights. I made uh, quite extensive notes because it was a very insightful uh, discussion and a uh, lot of sometimes opposing but very diverse um, viewpoints being brought in by different uh, contributions. So I will use this opportunity. Uh, I mean, I'll try to make it as succinct as, as possible. Uh, which is a very challenging task given <laughs> the, the breadth of the uh, information covered. But um, I would uh, use this opportunity mainly to bring uh, the diverse contributions made by the panelists into one common perspective uh, and also to add upon them a little bit on a, uh, with a lens of environmental planning and management, which is my expertise. Um, broadly, uh, today's question was discussed in three main aspects, the, the use of uh, inland water bodies uh, for recreational purposes, especially focusing on this uh, issue, the current hot topic on Parakrama Samudra. Uh, so uh, the, the main aspects were first, uh, I think the most uh, uh, contentious uh, aspect, uh, which, uh, which had a lot of uh, attention actually, to put a lot of attention in the questions as well, is the structural imp uh, implications and the technical aspects of recreational projects such, such as this, especially the Parakram Samudra project, uh, near or utilizing inland uh, water bodies. The second main aspect I saw was the various uh, aspects covered by, uh, uh, so the first one was mainly covered by uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ejini Abhisirvadana and uh, uh, Dr. Vitarana. Uh, and then the second uh, main aspect, uh, which was covered mainly by uh, uh, Dr. Mantri Tilak and uh, Mr. Uh, Somaratna, a planner, Mr. Somaratna, uh, were the other, uh, uh, other aspects uh, such as environmental, cultural, social and commercial and economic uh, of such projects there. And then there was a third and final aspect which were brought by a number of contributors, uh, which is the, the due process, uh, the planning and the due process aspects uh, of these projects, the, the regulatory aspects, uh, which apply to planning as well as, you know, approvals and things like that, which has to be followed regardless of uh, what are the outcomes of the project, whether it's good or bad, if it is the law of the land, it has to be followed. So uh, it was raised, many questions were raised whether uh, it, uh, such um, due process has been followed, uh, are being followed in these kind of projects, uh, as well as whether the, the law of the land that we have with regard to these kind of projects, whether it's adequate. Uh, so just uh, summarizing some of the uh, main points that was uh, uh, raised by the, the speakers, uh, Dr. Mantri Tilaka mentioned about like how water is not for singular use anymore. Uh, and, uh, and also a uh, very important point about uh, social media, how the communications can trigger uh, concerns very easily, which has a very big positive impact and some negative ones as well. Um, and also uh, he brought the aspect of livelihoods and social engineering, how livelihoods are, livelihoods are inseparable with engineering. And, um, and uh, Mr. Somarath actually brought out an uh, uh, important point uh, about place making, right? Uh, now, now planning, has, how it is transferring more and more into place making than just like doing technical planning and just dividing the uh, landscape into neat categories. Uh, and uh, of course, the need for participatory and bottom-up approach. Uh, Engineer Abhisirvadana did uh, a great presentation uh, explaining how the dams were never uh, limited uh, for irrigation, irrigation department dams. They were always multi-use, uh, which included tourism. And uh, he gave some good ex examples how tourism has been 
an objective of the dams, uh, operating the dams for a long time, uh, and how um, uh, additional livelihoods, providing additional livelihoods are taken as a, as a key pillar by uh, irrigation departments when they operate tanks. And one, one very important point about um, how cultural functions have been integral to the procedures of the irrigation department, that was something new to me. I didn't know. I mean, yeah, it was refreshing to know that. Uh, so what, what it shows is it's a very complex process that the irrigation department is handling. It's not a tunnel vision that they have. Um, but of course, uh, by uh, Dr. Vitharana's points, I think um, uh, a, a lot of challenges were raised that, that our water sector is, uh, is facing right now. Uh, he started with the legal definition of uh, water bodies, how especially dams are defined with the possibility of breach, keeping breach as, as uh, in the core of its definition and the applicability of legal liability, which is a very important point. Uh, importance of taking dam breach as a serious hazard to be dealt under the disaster management framework of the country, not just by the irrigation department, not, not just trying to make irrigation department re uh, responsible for something that large, right? So keeping it, uh, taking under the fold of disaster management uh, framework, uh, importance of hazard categorization and dam breach and flood mapping, which, which, which are all things which are severely lacking in our system, which we have to look into very urgently, I think that is a, a, a kind of alert uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Vitana brought and dam safety and integrity monitoring Parts of dam security uh, and uh, integrity monitoring, uh, and these points, all these points, actually highlighted the importance of what we call in our lexicon, our jargon, in the jargon of environmental management and environmental studies. This is what we call the precautionary principle. Unlike in legal matters, in environmental issues, we give the benefit of the doubt to accusers. If somebody accuses that there could be a health uh, disaster or environmental risk, right? In in any project, like we don't uh, we don't wait until the proponents of the project come with uh, undeniable facts that no, it it, uh, it uh, you know uh, we we don't ask the accusers to come with undeniable facts that uh, there is a danger. We give, the, give, we give the benefit of the doubt to the accusers and ask the operational party or the proponent party to prove that the accusers are wrong. It's the other way around of uh, uh, the, uh, the criminal uh, law system in the country. So that is a brief summarization of what was said. Uh, so to add a little bit on my um, expertise and my experience in the field of water management, I actually had, uh, and it comes mainly from the area of wetland management and uh, urban environmental planning and disaster related environmental planning. So one thing that I have seen, uh, most of these re uh, tourism and recreational projects uh, worldwide, this is, this is a international trend, uh, are now uh, imposed from above, right? Mainly decided by national go uh, governments and imposed uh, from uh, like imposed top bottom. If we honestly look at the reality, most such projects are either directly commercial in nature or are driven by commercial interests. So not necessarily all the, although we call them recreational, not necessarily looking at the benefits of the uh, benefits for the community uh, in the area. It becomes even more challenging when these uh, projects are, uh, uh, where they involve tourism or real estate uh, targets. These industries are generally, uh, they have very short term aspirations. As Dr. Herat uh, uh, said, that uh, projects uh, such as urban nature parks, wetland parks, uh, walking tracks, waterfront developments, when we try to justify such short term commercial objectives where, with environmental or social reasons, there is a possibility. Now, I'm not saying this is intentional of the uh, agencies which are uh, providing them, mostly it comes unintentionally, but there is a there is a possibility of what we call greenwashing happening. This greenwashing, so using environmental, um, say, pre, um, justifications to bring in some commercial projects, right? So this creates room for social justice issues. Certain social groups will benefit more than the others. Some marginalized groups can be worse off than the others. 
this may happen due to impacts on livelihoods some particular cultural and historic values uh, because you know like how a villager as as it was mentioned by many con, uh, you know speakers here how a villager value a tank may not be the way that an urban middle class person would value a tank as mr somratna said uh, you know place making is a major objective of modern plan but the question is uh, such places that are made are not valued in the same way by all the social groups so uh, we should not forget that uh, people on the ground uh, but also like keeping all these things in mind we should also not forget that the people on the ground are not always against such visits there are many examples of sri lanka as you know uh, exemplified by mr somratna and mr adi srivardhana uh where such projects are well loved and owned by local communities uh so finally uh, i would like to raise two points uh, for the discussion uh one um uh, there were some comments on whether the allocation of funds by agencies for such recreational projects is justified given the other more uh, immediate priorities such as health nutrition and things like that in the country like poverty eradication it in this is a very valid comment uh, but i think this question should be raised in a broader political discussion at the national level as most agencies are actually implementing national policy the policy developed over years by multi, by consecutive governments not by just one government so it will be good if one panelist one of the panelists can elaborate on this a bit like how this can be taken up at the national level my second point is second and last point is uh, the need uh, for a central coordination and mediation process for this kind of projects which actually cut across various sectors various institutional frameworks and different stakeholders especially uh, when involved government agencies themselves may be uh, may be having conflicting uh, government uh, conflicting mandates like as we see in this case so my question to the panel is whether there is an existing body in the water sector who can act as such a mediator or is it practical to establish a new one uh in this case right uh to bring my wrap up to a closure uh, i think the main takeaway point uh, from the discussion is the need for integrated integrated perspective in in the decision making in water sector not only just coordinating the government agencies but having an integrated vision for water in the country and true engagement of communities uh, with the uh, the stake with a stake in 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 such projects and empowering them in the process now i know this is a much debated topic you might have people as people in the water sector you might have heard this thousand times but without how many times it we say this but without achieving it problems uh, such as the one we discussed today will keep on emerging and hinder the progress of the sector and as, and the projects themselves thank you very much okay thank you very much uh... dr misaka uh, we have reached uh, the discussion time uh, only thing uh, dr vitarana uh, it is uh, maybe past 11 11 no no i am okay i am okay uh, that's right uh, uh, actually i um, uh, summarize uh, uh, you can see a lot of uh, questions there in very much detail uh, i summarize some of these uh, questions uh, first to direct uh, to the uh, dr mantra tilak and also mr somaratna then we can go to the technical uh, uh, questions later on um, now these are the issues raised in general uh, where they, whether there are uh, there was a social need assessment done uh, would a cycle track uh, would have been more appropriate has adequate consultation with people stakeholders made Mr. Somaratna, I think uh, you you can uh, uh, answer to that question. If they had why there is an opposition, uh, absence of multidisciplinary approach is uh, is an issue. Uh, it seems uh, in point form, I am telling uh, the summary of the uh, comments, the general comments. Uh, has there been any feasibility studies or environmental impact uh, assessment done before uh, embarking this uh, project? have we got our priorities uh, like uh, and what is the return on investment whether benefits justify the cost uh, some have uh, commented whether there had been any impact assessment on the walking paths constructed to assess the benefits 
what is the plan for and, and things like that. May, may I ask first, uh, um, Mr. Senarat, uh, Dr. Mansuri Tilaka, can you uh, respond to uh, these comments uh, as a whole uh, based on your uh, yes. perspective? Uh, yes, Padra. I think uh, the, this decision, so decision was made at the DDC or District Development Council. And I think that was the place created to make uh, local needs addressed. Unfortunately, the staff or the participants in that uh, don't speak out as I, my experience is. Most, most, like the, most of the time, the politician take the lead and they ensure in what they want. As you know, nowadays, our politicians are, are not political minded, they are minded on themselves, about themselves. So uh, they want to repeat or they want to emulate somebody else somewhere else. And these uh, ideas comes into play. And then if the experts sitting in the council talk about it and they will be without justification, without uh, emotions, they need to talk about what, what's uh, good and bad about it. And there's no discussion as such taking place. So they have become listeners. This is a pathetic, pathetic situation. Uh, first, it happened to the administration. Now some doctors are pushing the doctors uh, into this kind of situation. And we engineers being quiet all the time. And now it's encroaching us as well. So this has to be reversed. We need to be professional. And we need to spell out our objectives. I know this is not uh, this is very risky. and. Uh, uh, some of our seniors have paid for it. I know, uh, you know very well who I'm referring to. Uh, there are others who will take advantage. That this this seems to be a situation emerging in the society, which is which is irreversible to my mind, unless there's a strict discipline placed at least by the professional institutions and raise their voices on this. So economic and environmental assessment need to be done when we are spending public money. We as professional responsible for this. And it's not being done, we weakly become technical implementers or technicians doing whatever the politicians are doing. That's the bad part of it. With that, I stop here. Uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for that input, uh, Dr. Mansur Tilaka. Ms. Somaratna, are you there? Can, uh... Can we hear your uh, views at this moment, please? No. Yeah, uh, he seems to be not here. Actually, he uh, told me that he has a meeting uh, in the afternoon. Probably he might uh, have left. Uh, so uh, shall we go into the technical uh, uh, points actually uh, now uh, Nihal uh, pointed out most of the issues and he raised some questions. Uh, Mr. Abe uh, can you uh, elaborate or uh, give, give the answers uh, first of all to the questions if possible? I, 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 we, do not, uh, we don't know whether you have analyzed all these things and you have the answers at this moment with in your hand. If possible, uh, can you uh, put up your uh, views and also responses? Um, uh, then I will uh, point um, raise the uh, some other questions as well later on. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes, madam. Uh, actually, uh, uh, as irrigation department, I am receiving a lot of uh, questions uh, in the chat box and. Uh, I think uh, general public and our membership are waiting for our uh, views and our stand in this regard. Actually, uh, we have to say, according to Mr. Nihal it, it's a very valuable thing he explained as experienced uh, structural engineer in the world. And we have to appreciate his speech, actually. We, we know, you know, in the irrigation department itself is a... Is a, a community. We have more than 400 engineers in this department. We have no one unique idea. We are discussing each other. After this incidence, 
we are fighting each other and we are discussing each other and we, we have many views in this regard. Uh, we don't want to damage any anyone. We want to give the good, uh, good output to the country. So uh, our director general is evidence here. He had made several discussion in this regard. This is a big damage in social scenario to our department. So not the technical. So we have to answer the entire society, media people and uh, all the social media and uh, uh, all target the irrigation department. Uh, we, we have a lot of institutions, but if the credit is there, no irrigation department in that case. But if the damage is coming, we have to answer as the owners of the dam. That is how it is happened. But uh, we know the science of reprep, uh, we have our uh, ancient kings given that uh, technology to our country. We have in our genes that science. So after being into the department, we are being trained for that science. Uh, we know what is the science of uh, uh, refrap, what is the science of uh, dam safety, what's the, every, the, all these uh, we are studied, we are rich in technology, but we are rich, very poor in funds. We have to say, uh, we know all these technologies, but uh, we, I have to uh, accept uh, what Mr. Nihal Vitarna said uh, we have not monitored proper monitoring system, system actually you know, like in Japan. We have visited Japan and several countries, uh, but they have a lot of uh, monitoring system in the dams and uh, flood hazard map, everything is there. But in this country, we are little poor in that case, but we have the enough technology. Uh, even our engineering assistant and technical officer is having a big knowledge in this regard. So, so we, uh, that's why we are maintaining this dam. Now, now we, uh, we have a lot of people talking about the 1978 floods, actually. We have studies with all these ancient dams. What are the weaknesses? What are the positive and negative? All these points we have studied very well. Some, some things we cannot express in this public media, but if you are like to come to the department, we can give you uh, uh, good, good, important points in this ancient dam. But we have to look after, we cannot criticize uh, our great King Barakambahu, or we cannot criticize our uh, great engineers in the history. We have to maintain the system with all this blame. That is the responsibility in the department. So, uh, so we have to, look like that we are not uh, considered it as a small case, but, uh, but the, with this, uh, so all this uh, pressure develop uh, to this, uh, uh, this uh, jogging path case, we, our director general uh, is take it as a uh, positive point. Actually now secretary to the irrigation ministry appointed the committee in this regard. And uh, hearing after we never do Actually, we never do uh, this kind of uh, uh, project without proper analysis. We have appointed technical committee, expert committee in, in uh, for future projects. Expert committee uh, technically recommended first, then after that we go to the social committee, administration committee in the district level. Actually speaking, we have a lot of acts and rules and regulation, a lot of uh, regulatory body in Sri Lanka, but as uh, some speakers said uh, all professionals are silent. No, not, the, not the matter of regulation or the department. Professionals are silent because of many, many uh, uh, terrible situations in some forums. So uh, we, in, in, in future, uh, our director general will appoint a, a technical committee to evaluate properly and uh, submit technical recommendation. After that, it goes to the district level, then uh, any Hamudruo or any other politician or any others can uh, respond to that. Then only the, this will be uh, processed. That's why it is temporarily stopped, not because of uh, technical issue. We have the big social issue to be answered. Uh, so uh, uh, then uh, all are talking about this uh, rip -rap removing. There is no such things actually in the social media also. This is uh, this trip prep. You can see over the bun top level, BTL level, some boulders are there. So if you want to place this eight feet jogging path, you have to remove some top level boulders, not the removing of trip prep, it is above the BTL level. So we are uh, just placing some boulders 
uh, here and there to place the proper path and uh, also that uh, almost one third of the one third of the jogging path is uh, within the existing dam no one knows uh, we but we consider the worst case for the, the design analysis uh, uh, worst case we we, uh, we consider the worst case that is the practice in design uh, analysis but uh, a uh, big portion of the uh, jogging path is on the existing dam itself, but the, some boulders are in irregular pattern in the dam. That's why that is uh, removed by the machine uh, for, to, to make it uh, regular, but media came and people came that the irrigation department removing the uh, riprap. Eh? That is not, uh, not so bad. So we know what is the value of riprap, science, but we know what is the science of riprap. Of what is the wave action, everything, but we are not damaging. With that damage, we cannot survive in this country. Uh, so we have to protect, but but I have to say, uh, we have checked, uh, we had uh, experience in uh, three rehabilitation program in uh, 2003, uh, 2000 uh, in this dam. We had uh, 1978 uh, rehabilitation and 2012 rehabilitation and 2014 and improve the capacity and the command area. In that case, all the experts came to the seam and analyzed the stability analysis done by Peradini engineering faculty first time in uh, uh, under DSWRP project. And uh, other, other project also, all these uh, present uh, technology being used for stability analysis and finding safety factor and all. This has been done under the several project. Uh, but but uh, no one can say uh, any, uh, any dam will not uh, be breached in future. If, if I'm, I, uh, today I can check all these medical and go to the doctor and I will check all these sugar and uh, heart and everything, uh, but I cannot say I will, whether I die or not tomorrow. But uh, that, is the, uh, that is the actual scenario. We have checked everything, but uh, what to do? We have to take all the maximum efforts uh, to protect, but uh, uh, not like 1978. Now we have improved our, our hydrology division. We have the big, big uh, forecast mechanism. We have early warning system, but uh, we don't have no, not released to the media or uh, internet that our plant has are mapping, but we have done it with the collaboration of disaster management center. We have done it actually. Uh, then we have the plant disaster mapping and we, we know the plant uh, vulnerable area and we give early warning. Actually, uh, normally uh, we, we, we do, uh, we, we have paced 1978 plants uh, after several times now. Well, we, we operate the dams. If we are not operating the dam properly, Whatever the design of the dam, especially Parakram Samudra can be failed if you are not operate the uh, uh, sluice gates and uh, spill gates properly. So uh, we, we never allow go to beyond FSL now. The, the, now you can see uh, that rainfall is very close by. Uh, so we, 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 we maintain the space for the rainfall. So uh, we never allow irrigation engineer to go up uh, beyond FSL level, we, we have to operate that uh, spill gates. The, otherwise, uh, our director general will punish him. That is the case. So we have all blood warning system, uh, all early warning system, blood hazard map, but we don't have money to express to give you printouts and uh, provide some uh, monitoring system, some CPG analysis, uh, like, but modern dam in under Mahavali development program, we have done a lot of modern dam and irrigation department also done modern dam. We have all these monitoring system in modern dam, but ancient uh, dams we don't have, we have to accept. We have to agree that we are in a very poor country. Uh, uh, all, uh, uh, yes, we have all these uh, well, monitoring can I system. Talk? Yeah, yeah, you can. But yeah, 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 I think you know, they, 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 is that, yeah, I just give a cons, you know, context in the risk space. Now, I know, Abhis, Mr. Abhis said, heart can check, lung can check, but you know, 
still die. That's oh, we all have to die one day. That's for sure. But thing is, then say new dams got instrumentation, but we are poor to do the things for ancient dams. These ancient dams, what I don't know, consequence or direct and direct could, could be, you know, the, the nation's football, you know. The, the, so the to me, is, I'm a little bit surprised, but heart and lungs, we don't know. But by putting a jogging track to lose some kilos, what is like, we don't worry about the heart and the lungs, but we worry about the lipstick. You know, we, we just need to get the, 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 the priorities in order. I'm acting for a lot of clients. They do a portfolio risk. They look at, you know, how much, what's a, societal risk cost versus benefits and then rank it they don't go and put a jogging track when we say we admit uh, you know we don't have any instrumentation on this dam this dam is not going to fail due to stability I'll, most likely to pay through piping that's what we had to be very careful like uh, you know it's no point saying of course our kings build dams irrigation engineers you know well trained that we had to change the mindset from stability calcs because that's what universities teach is do stability calcs i don't know any university will teach in sri lanka how the giritale dam sorry um, kantale dam pipe through you know it's, it's, it's uh, soil mechanics uh, granular particles porous media you know filters you know that's what my message is just we have to be when money is allocated first thing is you know, like, like, dam like this instrument is so we don't know whether the heart and lungs are functioning or the cholesterol is you know through the roof rather than go and put a jogging track it's just like paint in the lipsticks yeah thank you very much uh, dr krishna uh, i think uh, your points are um, well taken and um, irrigation department has uh, opened their uh, mind to accommodate uh, See, but uh, may I say one it? other thing, it came up at the Nissan too, to monitor these things. You need to have a dam safety legislation which has powers to prosecute anybody meddling with dams without proper expert, intern, externally appointed external expert panel. That's what even Philippines currently doing. It's not you pick up an expert panel because he was at uni with you or your neighbor. It's, 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 they are empowered by the law, externally picked up panel, because if you look at a dam, dam fails, will a lot of mayhem. It's just, it's not a joke. It's not like uh, some, you know, road or bridge uh, settles. Dam, bridge, water comes behind it. Yeah, uh, we agree with that. Only thing, uh, then first of all, uh, we have to uh, get into the uh, seen those people who uh, now when the irrigation department or any other organization uh, propose uh, the rehabilitation, instrumentation and things like that. Uh, who are the people giving funds for that? So if, we, if the engineers are ready to implement such uh, preventive uh, safety measures, if they are um, uh, restricted with the funds, so uh, that, 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 that is the point, uh, the, I think the water engineers uh, wa have uh, worried so much. So uh, yeah, but... the priorities, uh, now we, we, there are a lot of comments about the priorities of the country and also the, pri the priorities over uh, the um, regional planning and things like that. So uh, um, I can see the, uh, Mr. Somaratna has come now to the uh, may, uh, before going again to the Mr. Abhisiradhana, may I uh, invite Mr. Somaratna to uh, share his views over this uh, uh, common um, yes, issue? Madam, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. thank you very much. I was on. I will yes, unmute you. Yeah. Now, actually, uh, the process and what we applied uh, with the as a team with the irrigation department and the all stakeholders. So uh, we uh, now we learn lesson. Now, uh, actually, uh, this discussion uh, was very helpful to rethink uh, such a project. Now, what I got is, uh, as an agency, UDA, uh, this is not a um, uh, simple way. Uh, even other this, this, this reservoirs are so much uh, sensitive than other tanks, uh, which are not used for the irrigation purposes. Uh, especially what I showed you. So therefore, uh, we have done
sorry again, uh, you have, uh, I, I think uh, uh, you, you get the connections uh, from Anuradhapura or Polon Narua. Uh, it may be the reason you get uh, always disconnected. Uh, until he comes, shall we go to Mr. Uh, Abhishek? Then are you there? Ah, uh, yes, madam. Yes, madam. Uh, yes. Now, actually, I, I never give any example further, right? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, we are in this culture and we are in this uh, country with uh, so, so many problems. Uh, so. Uh, otherwise, we are very much happy to install all these instruments, but, uh, but uh, after this, uh, uh, some uh, kind of argument, uh, Director General gave me a cheat, all these instruments are fixed in uh, Parakana Samudra now, after DSW, after project in uh, 2014, all these piece of meter and surface monument, loading beams, etc. are now fixed in Parakana Samudra, but I talk uh, in general, some ancient dams we have not fix the, those instrument, but uh, if, if uh, uh, priority also, we cannot decide the government priority, government policies, we cannot uh, decide. If you are giving priority, actually we are ready to install that. That is not the fault of the department or professionals, but we, we are always, uh, always crying for that actually, but uh, it, it is not the priority. Because we don't know the reason we are not the policy makers, but uh, if you are giving priority, we always ready to install this instrument. We want to be smart further and further. We are happy. We are studying this uh, technology from a scholarship, but we, we are unable to fix those instruments. Now I am the director of water management. I am, I am waiting for uh, automation. For, uh, we are giving, getting the major dams, uh, reservoir levels daily, uh, manual reading and uh, WhatsApp message, and I have to enter daily before uh, 12 uh, noon, I have to enter all these survey data to our website. That is uh, done by manually. I want to do it uh, uh, automated, but I, it, it's need about uh, 75 million. So uh, I am crying for the director general for one year now. That is not the priority in the, uh, in the, in the government. They have some other problems. We have, they have to face the COVID-19, maybe some other cases. So. Uh, so, so the, that is the actual situation. We have to say openly and frankly, uh, we, we are ready to do those things, but so many questions came. Uh, I think it is better to answer some questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, our around senior people, me, uh, are telling me to answer some question at least. Uh, with, uh, are there, is there any time, uh, madam, for yeah, to answer uh, something? Yeah, Mr. Uh, Abhishek, the only thing we have uh, so fast our time seven o'clock now to about twenty minutes. Can you yep. uh, um, yep. uh, cover up within five minutes time? Very uh, pertinent uh, issues only. I can see <laughs> Mr. Kandragam has raised many. Not only Mr. Kandragam, he he raised several times uh, from the key, key issues. Yep. Um, yep. But uh, it is not possible yep. to take all the um, uh, questions raised here. But I, we have noted everything. I'm sure you, the irrigation department, can uh, address all these things uh, during your discussions. We know that uh, there are a lot of discussions going on, and also Mr. Somaratna pointed out uh, that uh, they are going to reconsider uh, these proposals. So um, please go ahead, uh, taking only five minutes, please. Uh, okay, but uh, what I want to say that. Uh... We have that uh, hydrological forecast system for all the dams. We operate all the dams uh, spills uh, in time. Uh, at least one day advance, at least uh, me, uh, six hours advance, we are giving uh, public notice and the media notice when we are opening the gates. Uh, so that kind of technology we have input, uh, anyone can see that. And we read all the reservoirs in Sri Lanka uh, every day before uh, 9 a.m. So we read all the gauges and put it to the website. So uh, that kind of uh, effort we are taking. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, people ask in the uh, pre-board, uh, it is about four feet and uh, someone asking uh, with the dam safety, uh, 
uh, regulatory body going to be established, the cabinet paper gone, but uh, what is the response from the education department side? So many questions. Always we are ready to establish independent body, dam safety body. We are never against to that. We have given observation, but uh, if, if we are creating a body with uh, another, another burden to the community or country, uh, we never give our uh, positive observation. <clears throat> uh, if there is uh, any any positive uh, uh, things that are going to be implemented, the uh, irrigation department is ready to give our positive comments. <clears throat> and also uh, some uh, speak or some comment asking we, whether we have the dam policy or water policy in this country. Uh, then uh, <clears throat> Madam interfered to prepare this water policy for this country for several years now. From 2014 and 2016-17, uh, uh, that is not that uh, successful. Not because of engineers or irrigation department. Now the priority of the of some uh, some people uh, due to the government change, all these priorities are changing. We try our best to uh, finalize this water policy for a long time now, and also we want to finalize our reservation policy. Uh, for encroachment, a lot of encroachment, we want to finalize, but not yet uh, legalized properly. There are a lot of things, uh, actually very, we all this, as Madam explained, all these uh, comments and uh, problems, we keep it in record and uh, get it uh, for our process procedure in the future projects. Uh, so many, many questions, and uh, we are not removing the boulders, and uh, we are not removing the riprap, uh, we just uh, machine put to the push that big boulders uh, to place somewhere uh, over the BTL, not not the below uh, high flood level even. We have never touched <laughs> below high flood level. Uh, we never touch uh, uh, that critical areas. Just machine put uh, was to uh, place some boulders above the BTL. Uh, so that also is stopped. We will be at the a proper committee in future, technical and other administration and uh, other committee. Uh, uh, if you if you want, madam, if you are allowing our our dam safety engineer, our specialized branch engineer, is ready to answer for some any 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 uh, design criteria in this regard. But uh, we we are not uh, we never trying to place bypass this jogging track. We have no such idea. But government decided that. DCC, the uh, district coordinating committee asking, the policymakers asking to put that, then we cannot say no. So policymakers asking that we have to give the technical input. We are ne never more um, promoting the jogging track in this country. We are promoting the agriculture and other recreational activities, but we want to protect this uh, ancient dam at is, as it is. Uh, but uh, we, we, are, we don't want, we, have, we don't have any political hand to update this uh, uh, track or whatever. In this uh, special case, Parakram Samut also, we have no uh, very strict idea of a DG, uh, no need to push bypass. If the community is telling, if the other professionals are telling, we are never do it bypass. So, uh, uh, if uh, our uh, dam safety engineering uh, specialized branch in the material director engineering materials we have a separate branch for that we have a separate branch for the hydrology and disaster management we have a separate branch for the dam uh, design and uh, quality control and material and uh, oh, it was established uh, several years ago in uh, during 70s or 80s but uh, now it is functioning with the new technology very well he is waiting for answering any uh, questions. I, I am just a linger. I, I am talking about the birds and elephant, but he will talk <laughs> with uh, all the uh, technical points. I know the bird and elephant, but he will give the safety factors and all other uh, technical data. So, uh, Madam, can you give her to give some uh, two, two minutes? That's it. I will conclude my speech, Madam. Thank you. Um, yeah, we, we can uh, uh, give a maximum of uh, uh, five minutes. Uh, if, we, if, we, if she can uh, confine it to two minutes, that's okay. Um, um, uh, Mr. Abhishekwadhan, I, I will proceed. We will have a separate session, especially uh, for the dam safety. 
issues itself we were talking here uh, social environmental uh, and uh, the i mean in a wider uh, context uh, so uh, i mean uh, um, thinking about the whole uh, type of developments around the water bodies we will have a separate discussion aiming the dam safety i think it will be very useful for all of us uh, may i invite uh, uh, who is the director uh, who is coming taking up good evening good evening madam miss yeah. ma'am miss mrs namali uh, uh, is the director uh, engineering material division uh, have it masters on this subjects and uh, uh, is the in charge of the division thank you thank you namali can you please continue good evening good evening, good evening madam good evening, good evening. madam good evening Ma madam actually, actually we have not gone through all the details what dr nihal vitarana is uh, stating we are admiring those events uh, but uh, we we carried out the uh, from the range they have carried out the stability analysis for the for this jogging track and the uh, after all discussions uh, the general as assault as for to carry out the uh, stability and this is for the uh, jogging track uh, with that uh, we 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 come, we came to uh, figures uh, figures uh, the most critical event of the upstream slope is the uh, Uh, a pit road down that is accessible uh, to FSL plus this valley. It came to uh, without jogging track. It came to one for one point one nine two, and with jogging track it came to one point one eight three. Okay. It is uh, with the recommendation recommended values. It is marginal. Ah, uh -huh. yes. So. Thank you. Can I just kindly add something, Badra? Just yes, uh, I'm I'm yeah. sleepy. Um, for, yeah, now, for this part. Uh, two two things. Uh, basically, what I normally explain, you know, few things uh, which I sort of. When we say we don't remove the riprap below BTL is one top level. One top level is something on a drawing. Now, 1978, as I understand it, this dam didn't get eroded away. most probably because of those boulders so whether one top level is or not this irrelevant we would be compromising the post 1970 or pre 1978 failure event right then the okay. se second one is i think the what normally said is 1.19 Versus 1.18, so one. I think rapid drawdown is 1.2. It's my something marginal, so it's still marginal. But the the fact is, when the wave action comes, if a wave wave comes, hit the rocks, it goes to the gravel layer, and it sucks things out. So that's that's what you need to be careful. That slow failure. i think probably i saw something 1978 have that's the mechanism it's not static rapid road rapid road down is something they teach at universities you know because otherwise the students won't follow geomechanics um, you know that bluntly so you need to be extra careful about dynamic wave action i think this is called samudra is not for simple reason it's basically a sea somebody told me uh, when the wave are there these are not you know x one in 1000 year waves you know it is even difficult to walk on the band top so rather than book says 1.2 we had 1.19 now we are 1.19 need to take a step out and just look at the detailing you know that that's important that's all from me thank you nihal uh, normally is there anything to continue from your side No, okay, madam. Okay, madam. Now time is gone, and uh, we, uh, we will uh, have the separate discussion if necessary, as suggested by madam. Uh, yeah. uh, we have discussed a lot of things in general. Yeah, but, that's right. Uh, okay, madam. Okay, thanks, madam. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, especially to Nihal uh, in your 
Okay, but but some people ask uh, some people ask the that PowerPoint. You can share it with them. My okay. one. Yeah, sure. We will do that. I will and email also, it to you now. I will email it to you. Yeah. Right, uh, and also this uh, um, uh, whole uh, um, uh, session will be uploaded to the ISL website uh, maybe okay. within few days time. Uh, and we have collected all the comments. So definitely, this all this will be addressed. Sorry for uh, not uh, having uh, time to highlight uh, the facts mentioned by the uh, participants. Uh, there, um, I think, it is more than hundred uh, odd uh, comments here, uh, all very constructive comments. So we had a very successful discussion. There were a lot of eye-opening uh, insights, and I believe that we all have in the course of the webinar and uh, ready to review this in a fresh angle. Uh, as um, Mrs. Omaratna also uh, highlighted that, we are very happy about that. So we can have hope in what uh, irrigation department said and appointing a technical committee. It is a very good uh, step forward. Uh, at least at this point, uh, if now, as I said, uh, after the Katrina uh, disaster, um, USBR has taken a lot of uh, pro uh, progressive action uh, after that lesson. So likewise, um, I'm sure we have to get uh, appropriate uh, action uh, appointed technical committee. So I hope the committee will look at these aspects covered in the webinar and uh, would uh, be open to the external input as well. So we, with that note, may I invite um, uh, engineer Palita to uh, deliver the vote of thanks. Sorry, I saw many comments uh, asking uh, to carry out, I mean, to continue the discussion, but <laughs> there is a I limit. am ready. Uh, I am okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyhow, there is a time limit for ISL yeah. as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Jay Badra. Uh, uh, we had a, a very kind of uh, very uh, sort of uh, uh, very powerful and uh, thought-provoking webinar uh, with our eminent panel panelists. I will just take one minute to do it and I don't want to uh, read my whole word of thanks. Just take one minute. Uh, I am deeply uh, grateful to all the panel members, uh, engineer Dr. H. Mantri Tilaka and uh, Dr. Nihal Vitarana and engineer D. Uh, Abhi Srivadana and uh, planner Mr. H.W. Somratna and they are very provoking uh, and very uh, interesting discussion and especially I uh, thank uh, Dr. Nihal Vitarana uh, from Australia. He's spending his uh, late night beside his busy schedule. So thanks very much uh, Dr. especially from, from your side and uh, Dr. Somratna from Anuradhapura. He also uh, contributing from North Pro, so we got a special thank for them. And uh, a big thank to engineer Dr. Uh, Mr. Hetty Archie and uh, uh, great gratitude to engineer Ms. Badra Kamala for, uh, for the for the moderation and the uh, summarizing the event. And I also express my sincere thanks to Chairman UDA and uh, DG, Director General of Education Department and their staff. And I express my sincere thanks to all the participants who have taken keen interest uh, to make this, uh, uh, to make a time out in their busy schedule to attend to this webinar and make this webinar a success. Uh, lastly, uh, <clears throat> my thanks is due to my colleagues in IESL, officers and staff, and other uh, agencies who have worked work with great dedication to make this webinar successful. Thank you very much for all you all. Good night, uh, good evening to you all. Thank you very much.